So I will just explain to you how you lay out balusters on this type of <coughs> open staircase. So the general rule, if you look at a book like, like this uh, Kaufman Stair Building Guide, the general rule is that you always have the baluster in line with the front of the, of the riser. So in this case, we've got an inch and three quarter overhang on the riser. So that's where the first baluster is gonna go. So in effect, our, our run here is eight and three quarters of an inch because that, that line there is in line with the, the front of the riser. So if I've got inch and a quarter baluster, what works out mathematically is to have a three and an eighth inch space between each baluster. So that means I'm gonna have two balusters on each step. And what's nice about a three and an eighth is that if you look at the balusters we're using, they have a contour to them, but it's also gonna meet code where it's a lot narrower up at the top of the baluster. Then we're just gonna use a good old fashioned level to level down on the baluster to get our center mark for where we're gonna drill our holes to put the dowel into the step. And we can also double check that with a laser level and just make sure. But that is exactly how you do an open staircase, whether you need to do two steps like we're doing or 15. So the front of the riser is the front of the first baluster. That's sort of the rule. So I'll just show you that calculation for the baluster spacing. So in our case, we have eight and three quarters of an inch is our run. And then we're going to subtract two times because we're using two balusters, 1.25 or an inch and a quarter, which equals two and a half, eight and three quarter minus two and a half equals six and a quarter. Now, because there's two balusters, we divide that by two and we get three and one eighth. That's how I arrive at that spacing between the inch and a quarter balusters. Now, a little more dumbed down version of that whole calculation is lay two balusters on your eight and three quarter line or your line where the riser is and then measure your remainder and I get six and a quarter. Then I'll take six and a quarter, divide that in half because I have two balusters, and my answer again is three and an eighth. That's a real easy way to do that calculation. Now here's an example using metal balusters. If we had a nine and a half inch run, we'd have to go with three half inch balusters because two would not give us a, a space smaller than four. So if I line up my three balusters at the nine and a half inch mark, the remainder is eight. And then I would divide that by three spaces and that would give me my spacing between my balusters, which in this case would be about two and 11 sixteenths between each baluster. All right, so we've got our first baluster in place here, just dry fit and it's plumb both ways. And now I'm gonna dry fit the rest of the uh, balusters before we drill the holes and install them. And there's a couple of little things you have to be mindful of, especially with a contoured baluster. And I'll show you. All right, so a really good idea to drill these out on the bottom for the dowel before you cut the top on an angle. So I'll just get my friend Dave here to make sure I'm going plumb both ways. I think that's pretty decent. We got a 716th dowel. That will work good. So we have our balusters dry fit exactly where they're going to go, and we have them marked on the masking tape at the bottom. We've drilled the balusters for a 716th dowel. Now we will drill the stair treads for the same. 
one of the things you've got to remember is when you do these kinds of balusters with a, a contour on them, you, you have to have the, the balusters follow the slope of the stairs. So on our first stair baluster, we cut a 41 degree angle on the top and we measured that distance there, which is like five and a quarter inches or so. And all the rest of these balusters have to have that same top five and a quarter in order for it to look proper. In other words, if you just cut off the top on each one, it'll be all messed up. And what you're gonna end up having is one long baluster, one short baluster for every stair tread. And that's what happens when you use balusters on an open staircase. And that's why manufacturers will make 44 inch balusters and 35 inch balusters or 36 so that you can have one of each on each step. And then of course with a volute, if we had balusters down to this bottom tread, they would have to be like a 48 inch or so baluster, which you can buy, but we don't have those. So we're not gonna bother with a baluster on this bottom tread, because it's just simply not necessary. So if you go corner to corner on your baluster, then where those two lines intersect, that'll be the middle of your baluster. And that's where you're gonna drill that 7 16 hole into the stair track. Good. All right, so we've dry fit these balusters with the dowels inside and they all go in well. We've prepped all the balusters um, so that they're, they're ready to go. We're gonna start at the bottom, work our way up. It's generally the best way to go. And uh, the top ones will have a different kind of adhesive on the top because they're going into a finished piece of uh, railing. So here we go. I'll we'll just go like this. All right, so when you put a baluster in with an angle, if you always work this way, you can slide it into spot, into the spot right like that. In this particular baluster, you have no choice on how it's gonna go in. <clears throat> it's the only way it's gonna go in, just like that. We use a one inch pin.
plow, you don't have to glue at the top, right? I did. I put glue on there. I believe I did anyway. Nope. <laughs> Good eye. Yeah, so uh, we're going to put a trim screw into the top of these two, two balusters. That's not normally the way you do it when you have this kind of system. What you have to do is, is put a, a dowel in the top of the baluster and then put the railing on on top, which is really, really difficult when you don't have a plow. But for just two balusters, that's the way I'm going to tackle it, is just putting a trim screw into the fitting, and it should be 100%. A present. Not, I, I actually, I have never got a present from a customer. <laughs> never, ever. Get out. Get out. That is too nice. <laughs> Boy, you played that well. Get out of town. Thank you so much. I was just commenting on how much I like your workbench. That is too cool. So, thank you so much. We're extremely grateful for everything. Oh, well, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Huh. Wow. 300 pound capacity. So I can eat my lunch on it then. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I'd encourage you to check out each of the seven videos in this series. And don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share with others. Help grow the channel. Take care.